Today on Sugar Spun Run, I'll be showing you how to make a classic ermine frosting. Hey Sugar Spun Bakers, Sam here, and today's recipe is an old-fashioned frosting that's often also known as boiled milk frosting, and it goes by a number of other names as well. It's pretty simple to make, and honestly, the texture and the taste reminds me a bit of Swiss meringue buttercream. Now, just like with Swiss meringue, we are going to start over on the stovetop, so you will want to grab a small or medium-sized saucepan, and let's head over there. We're going to combine one cup of granulated sugar, five tablespoons of all-purpose flour, and a fourth teaspoon of salt, and we'll whisk these ingredients together really well so that there are no lumps left from the flour. This is going to ensure that you have a smooth, lump-free frosting. Next, we're going to be adding a cup of milk. Now, I'm using whole milk today, but please see the notes section in my printable recipe below if you want to substitute a different kind of milk. Now, I'm going to add this into my sugar and flour mixture while whisking. Just continue to whisk until this mixture is nice and smooth. Now, turn your stovetop heat to medium, and we are going to whisk pretty much constantly until the mixture begins to thicken. Now, whatever you do, don't turn up the heat on your stovetop or you will end up burning your frosting or worse, your sugar won't dissolve properly and then your frosting is going to just be a gloopy mess. Once this is nice and thick, we're going to remove it from our stovetop and I like to transfer it immediately to a heat proof bowl. Now cover the surface of this flour mixture with a piece of plastic wrap and make sure that you press that plastic wrap directly against the surface of this roux mixture, otherwise you're going to get a skin that forms. Right when my roux finishes cooking, I like to pull my butter out of the fridge and let both of them get to room temperature at about the same time. Now once your butter is softened and your roux is cooled, we're going to go ahead and add the butter to the bowl of a stand mixer. If you don't have a stand mixer, you can absolutely use an electric hand mixer instead. Now we'll turn our mixer to low speed and gradually increase that to high speed, and you just wanna whip the butter until it's light and fluffy. You may need to pause to scrape the sides and bottom of the bowl if your paddle attachment is having trouble getting those areas. Now we can begin incorporating our room temperature roux. Now I like to add this just about a spoonful at a time while my mixer is running on medium to low speed. Now don't add the next spoonful until the first is completely incorporated. Make sure to pause as needed to scrape the sides of your bowl. Now once everything is nicely combined and smooth, I'm going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract for some flavor. And now we'll gradually increase our mixer speed up to high and beat until this mixture is airy, light, and fluffy. All right, our frosting is looking just about perfect here. If you whip yours a little bit too long and you notice some air bubbles in there, you can just use a spatula, work that through your icing, pressing against the side of the bowl until you've worked those air bubbles out and your icing's nice and smooth. As I've said though, this is looking perfect, so I am going to go use it to ice a red velvet cake. I hope you guys enjoyed this classic red velvet cake frosting, also known as ermine frosting. If you try it out, please let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. It's good.